Everybody makes distinctions. They say, well, oh, that's soy oil. Well, it's fat. But yet soy oil is not grass-fed butter. Well, why can't you make the same distinction about carbohydrate, right? A, a potato or an apple versus a Coca-Cola or, you know, gator piss, the, uh, you know, energy drinks, which, but there's more energy, energy drinks out there than you can shake a stick at. It's un unbelievable. Welcome. To Corporate Warrior, the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health, optimize performance, and maximize productivity with your host, Lawrence Neal. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I've ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and into Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. This episode is brought to you by the Resistance Exercise Conference, the science and application of strength training for health and human performance. Would you like to learn from the top strength training researchers, network and connect with other exercise professionals from all over the world, join a welcome reception on a Friday night to build relationships with other strength training professionals, experience an early morning workout from an expert trainer to kickstart your Saturday, and get inspired, rejuvenated, and focused on your strength training business, I certainly do, and that is why I am attending and interviewing all of the speakers at the event. The Resistance Exercise Conference will be held on the 9th and 10th of March 2018 in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Commons Hotel. To get 10% off your entry fee, head on over to resistanceexerciseconference.com, click the registration button, and enter Corporate Warrior 10 in the promo code field in PayPal. I'm very excited about this and I've wanted to attend for years. Sign up now at resistanceexerciseconference.com and get 10% off with promo code CORPORATEWARRIOR10 and I look forward to meeting you in person. Hi guys, I am Lawrence Neal and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior, the podcast that teaches you how to optimize your high intensity training protocol and your hit business to help you achieve your health, fitness and business goals. My former guests include people like Pete Sisko, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, Dr. Doug McGuff, Dr. James Steele, Luke Carlson, Mark Sisson, Andy Magnus, and many, many more. My next guest is Richard Nikolai. Richard is the author of Free the Animal, How to Lose Weight and Fat on the Paleo Diet, and is founder of the very popular blog FreeTheAnimal.com. Free the Animal began by a different name in 2003 and as of 2016 contains over 4,000 posts and 100,000 comments from readers. Richard is prolific. He blogs about all sorts including health, diet and lifestyle to philosophy, politics and social issues. Richard celebrates the audacity and hubris to live by your own exclusive authority and take your own chances in life. Free the animal really means to free yourself, to reach your best potential in all areas of your life, learn from mistakes and successes and move on. 
Rich is known as being a rather abrasive character on the internet and doesn't shy away from saying exactly what he thinks. This episode is no exception, and just to spice it up a little more, I've left in some of the off the record pre and post recording chat to give you a little look behind the scenes. In this episode, we discuss who's legit and who's not in health and nutrition, low carb and anti grain fats, how Richard makes money on his blog, and much, much more. For all of the show notes and links for this episode and all episodes, please go to corporatewarrior.org. And to go, don't forget to hang around at the end for, I never say this one, can I, for your free gift and access to my excellent emails. And now I give you the notorious Richard Nikolai. Hey, Richard. This must be Lawrence. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very good. How are you? Good. We're not. Do- are we doing this on video? Well, I, it's up to you. I mean, I like. I don't actually publish the video, but sometimes I like doing the conversation with video oh. because we okay. can see each other's All faces. Right. <laughs> so, if, let me see. Am I on video with you? Not yet. But, okay, uh, let me, take let a me second, uh, yeah, let me uh, uh, check that out here. So, oh, there we go. You can see mine, though, yeah? Yeah, yes, I can. That, well, that's why I always wonder. Always, yeah, so. The long hair is back. <laughs> the long hair is back. Well, no, it's always been there. You know, I, it's, a, it's a thing. And, and by the way, you can record anything you want from the time we start talking, just to, so you're aware. You, I don't care what goes in your show. It's your show, right? I've done a few podcasts. My, my, I've, I've done a few of my own where I'm sitting in your chair. Um, or standing, you're standing. I can tell you're standing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, is, it's pretty cool doing this like across the oceans, man. Yeah, it is. I I get, go ahead. No, I get the feeling you really enjoy doing them because, I listened to your most recent uh, on Sigma and also the Dark Horse. Yeah. Really enjoyed both, and I just yeah. I can yeah. see you enjoy the the experience. I do, I do, um, and it's not something it's not something I ever like seek out. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like not like I'm available for podcasts. People seek me out. I don't know. I don't know in particular why that is. Um, oops. I accidentally hit the video <laughs> off button <laughs> and I'm trying to adjust things so that, uh, so that you get a, this, the clear view, uh, um, behind me and everything. But, um, I like it, but I, but having done a few of myself, a few myself, the production, and then like doing all the editing and, in uh, what is it, um, GarageBand? I, I have a Mac, so using GarageBand and everything, and splicing in the bumper music and everything. I'm like, Jesus! I don't know. I don't know Outsource. how guys <laughs> put outsource. <laughs> yes, outsource. Right. <laughs> I used to do. I used to do all that shit, and uh, I. I had this is my full time job now. Um, so just to give you a bit of context, I used to be in a. IT B2B sales in London in the UK for like almost 10 years. And, really? Uh, yeah, so I got kind of sick of the corporate grind and always wanted to do my own thing. And uh, here I am now in Ireland of all places uh, with my girlfriend. So you're English. Yeah, I think I think, uh, I think Chris Hycock told me that you're actually right. English, but, you're, but you live in Ireland, right? Because you're, <laughs> you're, you're damn easier for me to understand than, a, than, than Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be fair, there are there are far worse Irish accents than Danny's. I'll tell you. Oh now. God, he uh, well, he's clean. He, he's clean. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I was just bantering on Facebook yesterday. I have an old, old English friend, uh, Keith Braddock, uh, Facebook guy. Uh, you know, you you got y'all guys ought to be friends. You know, it looks like we're we're uh, we're we're friends of Richard, whatever. You know, but I met Keith. Uh, in 1989 in Pattaya Beach, Thailand, right? 1989. We're talking ancient history, I was right? Two years before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were we were we were traipsing around, traipsing around. Took the bus up to Bangkok, flight out to to uh, Phuket, actually, um, <clears throat> and 
I, it was a week. And then, you know, he actually visited me in the U S and everything. We've been in and out of contact for many years, but, but now we are. And so he was the one that, uh, that taught me a few of the choice, uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, rhyming slang thing. So just on that note, on, on that note, the trouble and strife should be back from the dentist office pretty soon. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to understand me and, uh, yeah, no, no, I can understand you perfectly. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit, but like, uh, he had, he had friends in time. He hooked me up with that did, complete cockney rhyming slang all the time and you could not literally it's like a, i was learning i i had just come from uh six months of immersion french school with with six native speakers because my next job was to uh was to be a, a exchange u.s navy officer on a french ship in the mediterranean so i had to know french I'm telling you, it was easier to understand French. <laughs> I know what you mean. Than, than yeah. the Cockney rhyming slang, you know. I, I, I mean. can't understand it either. Uh, yeah. For yeah. Well, for the, when, when you when you meet those types of guys, um, yeah. I just wanted to run a. I saw. I, I may. I never had someone just say to me, "You know what? Let, just use whatever you want. I don't care." Like in terms of the content. I um, that is how I roll. That's I, how I, I roll. I appreciate that, and that, that's definitely how you come across in 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 what from what I've seen from your work. Um, so I will have a think about that and think about how I'm going to like do it all. But yeah, I have someone else do that for me, so I'll give them the the instructions. Good. good, um, good, good. I just wanted to run a, a few through a few things before we get started. Uh, firstly, I just want to say like I'm really grateful that you're taking the time to come on my show. Um, I haven't. I must confess, I'm not someone who's consumed a lot of your work over the years. I've read the odd thing here and there, but you mm -hmm. obviously are a huge icon in kind of the paleo um, space. Um, and I'm the guy who pisses everybody off. You're that guy, exactly. So. I'm that guy. <laughs> so so it's, it's it's cool to be talking um i just wanted to ask a couple of things before we get started properly um before i start throwing questions at you have you listened to any of my episodes previously at all uh i i i caught a uh, i caught a few clips i thought it would be best to scroll down a list and see who my friends are like skylar and doug mcguff and and i can't remember was i i listened to, i just listened to clips here and there just to yeah. kind of get a sense of the, the of the thing um but but you know uh by the same token i was unaware of 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 your podcast it, it's the, the the whole the whole sphere you know if you, you whether you're talking paleo or whether you're talking um uh, you know, just whole food diet or, or any of these things or the HIT, uh, you know, um, and uh, any of that stuff. It's so varied now that you it, it, back in the day in 2008 when I started this, you followed a handful of people. Right. And then it exploded at one point in time. I had. Because the publishers that were publishing all the paleo cookbooks, all the new books, I had literally 200 books <laughs> stacked in my – like because they would send them all hoping for a review, and, and right. I would have spent a full time just reviewing all the books coming out, right? Yeah. So everyone kind of jumped in it for the money, and it was never my deal. Um, <clears throat> I make enough to – to pay for the blog and beer money, basically, you know, uh, and, and, um, you know, I don't need it. And so that gives me the luxury of being able to sleep well at night by knowing that every time I put up a post, it's what I either loved or hated. And I wasn't doing it because, well, this is what people need to hear. or This is what can get me, you know, 10,000 shares and likes. I never operate that way. Just don't operate that way. Like good yeah. for you. Um, I appreciate you taking a second to review my stuff. Um, so you, you're friends with Skylar and Doug, are you? you? I'm sorry? You're friends with Skylar and Doug. Oh, Sky. Well, uh, I'm friends with, I'm friends with Skylar long time, a Doug long time. In fact, okay. I did a, I had, uh, Skylar once put a, put Doug and I through a workout in the studio, you know, on, on one of those machines. Well, a, a few of them actually, he, he put me through a true HIT workout where 
he's got a, a stopwatch and he's he's timing your time under load essentially right. right without locking out so you don't lock out you keep it under the load and then you know you may hold it and then you move it forward you maybe move it back hold it da 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 and it, it, it and that was uh, you know i'd already been doing Doug's big five for quite a while uh, you know, here and there. In fact, I'm just about getting going to get into it, but that's another story. If you want to, I, I assume yeah. you're going to using all this in this stuff, but yeah, we'll, but, we'll come on to that. Well, we, I go way back with the working out, uh, you know, back to the art Devani days wh- where I first came into the whole paleo kind of thing way back in 2007, 2008, because I, I was, I was fat pretty fat, um, you know, 250 pounds, 240 to 50 pounds on five foot 10. And I figure, well, I'll go to the gym, but I hadn't been to the gym for a long time and I'm pretty strong dude. And so I started lifting weights, but immediately it started to occur to me just naturally that that intensity and time are inversely related. I see all these people out there, you know, they spend three hours in the gym. I'm like, what if I do 30 minutes twice a week, right? And the, the, the results you get, even from that, even from your own, without refining it into, into, into what HIT is, even without doing that, you, you, the, the gains that you get are so profoundly almost immediate. Like within a week or two, you're yeah. just, it's like, I can't believe it. Richard, right. let's 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 pause on that because I want to ask you about that, and you're giving away all the good stuff. <laughs> okay, sorry. So I'm just going to ping for a bunch of stuff. I just need you to just hear me out for a second. So uh, swearing is absolutely fine, just so you know. I knew you're probably going to yeah. swear anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just so you know, my audience are like mostly made up of high intensity training enthusiasts so like just participants of the training modality just because they love its efficaciousness and efficiency and stuff like that uh and then the other kind of swath are like uh high intensity training business owners right yeah so doesn't mean that you have to tailor what you say to those people but it's just to give you uh, an insight sure Um, what's my market here yeah, in terms of time, I can probably go till 6.30, 6.15 my time, which is like an hour. Another and, hour and uh, hour 15 minutes. Yeah, how are you for time? What's your hard stuff? Any time, any, any, you know, I'm, I'm always, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and there's a couple of things I wanted, I just wanted to like check before we got going is, are you okay for me to ask you your personal opinion about Dave Asprey and the Bulletproof Diet? Public. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go there. And can I ask you about, I mean, I don't want you to necessarily give me numbers, but are you open to talking about, if we get this far, the revenue streams in your business, in your blog? Sure, 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 sure. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and, and, and also, you, you feel free to ask me about my former entrepreneurial endeavors. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So. All right, let's, let's get cracking, shall we? Sure. Okay, so can, also, can you hear me clearly? How's the audio? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You're clear as a bell up here at 4,200 feet in the Sierra Nevada mountains in, right. in the east, eastern side of California. Yeah. I got this. This is a brand new pop filter. I've literally just put it on yeah. like half an hour ago. So hence why I'm at this. It's a bit awkward because I'm like, yeah. I don't want you not to see my face, but yeah. kind of like this. Don't worry about it. Don't worry <laughs> about it. No, it's, a, it's the eyes, you know. That's so. it. Okay, so let's do this. Three, two, one. Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure, Lawrence. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Yes, you are. You are most welcome. Um, so as we were talking about just now, uh, prior to uh, this interview, I listened to your stuff with Sigma Nutrition and your podcast on Dark Horse. Loved both of them, and I just want to encourage those listening to this. If you want to get more context on diet, check out the Sigma Nutrition podcast. And for more context on philosophy and entrepreneurship, go to Dark Horse because mm-hmm. I'm going to expand on both of those in this. But I think they're great compliments for people that want to find out more about you in a podcast format so i will link to those from the show notes for people um so i wanted to start off talking about fat loss and one of the topics i had submitted by uh, one of my listeners was look lawrence i want less low carb bullshit you know you're always talking about high fat low carb can you just talk about that for a bit in terms of 
where you think low carb gets it right and where you think you know the high fat low carb movement goes off track uh you know i've done a lot of thinking about this and and people may know i i out of frustration you know i go i go quite a way back um to 2007 ish 8 ish where i kind of got into this paleo thing um which was which is uh, which is a, a, a pretty much a, a lower carb movement and by low carb i mean relative to what people eat normally right um but it is it the and 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 of course and that came packaged with the deal that there's no reason to be afraid of fat in your food right in other words you eat an egg it's okay the saturated fat in a steak is okay all these things which are which were great which were great and a lot of people did very well very quickly right and it's obvious i mean um anecdotes are not evidence but maybe the sum of anecdotes is uh is something worth taking a look at right so um so, but it, and it went on and on and on. But in in the in the desire, which kind of goes to sort sort of the business side of things, uh, you know, everyone's looking to cash in. And we talked uh, before we got into this about how many I had two hundred books, paleo books that publishers sent me with a hope to review. And I mean, everybody's bought. and so. But but when you do that. It's kind of like if you're making Tide detergent, you got to have new and improved Tide and new, new, new improved Tide. You know, you always got to have new and improved. So it has led us into this weird realm where uh, just just uh, being sensible about carbs has gone to where, oh, you got to keep them low. And, and not only that, but protein could be chocolate cake, which is a, which is a men. Uh, I don't know if people know where the, that meme comes from, but it was, uh, it's from Jimmy Moore, the living La Vida low carb dude. Right. Uh, and, uh, so all of these things combine together and you, you start to get into this, into this, it, you know, if you look at a bell curve, right. And, you you have maybe maybe the standard American diet is right there in the in the fat part of the curve and you know a little further forward you have the you know paleo types whole food types low carb types and on the other end you have the like vegetarians or more plant based but then on the extremes you have the vegans and now you have what I call the keto tarts right which I addressed. To, at great length on Danny's show, and I'm I'm, gl- I'm glad you guys are, are are collaborative in this way. You know, feed off each other. That's a good thing. Um, but yeah, uh, you if if it's like what are what the what are the carbs? What carbs are you talking about? Are you talking about Coca Cola carbohydrate? Or are you talking about potato carbohydrate? There's you know you're everybody makes distinctions. They say, well, oh, that's soy oil. Well, it's fat, right? It's fat, but yet soy oil is not grass-fed butter, right? Well, why can't you make the same distinction about carbohydrate, right? A, a potato or an apple or an orange versus a Coca-Cola uh, or, uh, or, or you know, gator piss, the, uh, you know, energy drinks, which, which are just, just, I don't know, in America here, there you go, I can't even believe it. I think I probably had Gatorade like way back when when it was, but there's more energy, energy drinks out there than you can shake a stick at. It's uh, unbelievable. So anyway, does that answer your question? Uh, You know, (laughs) I guess the, I guess the bottom line is the bottom line is that, 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 uh, that the benefits of low carb, I think that was your original question. The benefits of low carb were pretty nicely laid out by Dr. Atkins in the original Dr. Atkins revolution. If you want it, you know, and it's funny because if you just go back to the beginning, you say, what were the benefits of that? Well, number one benefit was it, was it tended to limit your consumption of junk crap because most of the junk crap has a lot of carbohydrates forget whether they were concerned about the 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 um the protein or the uh or 
you know, fat in it, but it was limited in carbohydrates. So by virtue of just that one standard, they reduce their consumption of junk food. Well, what do you replace it with? Well, how about meat and eggs? So you're upping the protein. So, so really, it, you know, I look at it over these decades since the early 70s, and I say, I say, you know, if you want to do go low carb, go grab a copy of the original Atkins Diet Revolution, and it's all you need to know, except maybe that at the time they didn't really understand that, you know, you know, various crappy seed oils weren't necessarily a good thing. So just take that, replace the replace the crap oils with better oils if you want to, and go, and you'll do fine. You'll do fine. Yeah. No. Good, good answer. It's uh, you can go, even go simpler than that, and just look at someone like Dr. Ted Naiman on Twitter, and look at his yeah. look at his infographics, yeah. and they're just they're like two sentences: eat loads of protein, occasionally yes. do lift heavy things. Like, you know. yeah, um, yeah. Well, the thing the thing is 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 all of these things. You know, I can't believe it in the in what I call the. And I have a, a, a group on Facebook. If any of your people want to check it out, it's called Richard Nikolai's Keto Tard Chronicles. I'm on it. Should be easy, easier to find. Easy to find. But the thing is, is that and Ted's a good guy, right? He's he's one of these people who are you know, somewhat in, to, in both camps trying to do the best he can to get things. And I'm the guy who makes fun and mocks stupid shit. And so, but it takes both, I think, right? I don't, it, you know, if you get to a, a point of sanity, 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 if you say you made me feel real fucking stupid, that makes me feel good, Right. Because that's how I, that's just, that's my motivation. You know, it's, that's my, you know, someone at, told in my, in the thing, in the, uh, said, well, ask, ask Richard what his habits are uh, that he produces so much content. And my answer would be, would be, well, when, when you're talking about habitual, for me, when I say habit, it should be prefaced with bad. Right. <laughs> so when I do good stuff, it's by grace. It's it's not habitual, right? So I have this habit of wanting people to feel either ignorant or stupid, right? And it's just what I do. And and people, a lot of people hate it. That's fine. It's why I have it's why I have a smaller following than a lot, but but. But my following are, in many cases, very true fans because they're 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 looking for you know who am I going to shit on next, right? But so. you, you'll you'll only shit on someone if you feel like they are charlatans and talking exactly. Shit, right? So it's not exactly. it's not like you're ripping people down that are doing good stuff. Yeah, you know. yeah. People people come to me all people come to me often and say, well, when are you gonna when are you gonna shit on Mark Sisson? Go fuck yourself. Sisson is an honest businessman who who always and, and I've, I've had his ear for years. I can pick up my phone and, and give him a call on the cell phone. He'll answer. We, we talk. We talk about stuff and I never tell people what we talk about privately. But he he wants to make he wants to he wants to make, develop products. He wants to sell them. Right. And he wants to keep developing and them, changing them, improving them, sell them. But he doesn't do crap, which might get you into uh, into another uh, subject, uh, a juxtaposition, shall we say, uh, of, um, with someone who's uh, you know an up and comer in the product development world, right? Who, who might that person be, Richard? <laughs> well, it could be Dave Asprey, <laughs> but bulletproof—the most ironic term in the world. Where where virtually everything is uh, is avoidance avoidance of of this of mycotoxins avoidance of lectins avoidance of this and all this stuff in what world is that not tender flower and to call it bulletproof is it, if you want to examine it on a fundamental level that's really what you should start to think of in your mind is how does someone start with a paradigm that is that that makes you that like tries to identify everything you might be sensitive to and rather than push it through push through it 
Like, for example, when I was a kid, my, my grandparents harvest, harvested raw walnuts. They made welts in the top of my mouth, made, made the roof of my mouth itch. What I do? I just ate more of them. <laughs> well, Got over it. And that then made you resilient. Got over it. What? Yeah. That then made you, you resilient, know, did it? It made us. It, that, now that's bulletproof. I'm bulletproof for raw, raw, raw walnuts now. But to say, you know, I'm going to oh, avoid them, they've got whatever they have. Who knows what they have, right? Or, co- you know, the whole coffee shtick. And Joe Rogan just blew that stupid shit right out of the water. You know, everybody knows that story. Yeah, because he, do. you know, he made, he made the mistake. He made the mistake of embarrassing Rogan. And you don't want to embarrass a guy like Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know, you just don't. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I... In his defense, I do think that some of Dave's ideas are good. And I do feel like I've improved my own health uh, and diet as a result of consuming some of his content. Um, mm. But, yeah, I do feel like some of his ideas just just are, are very questionable. Um, and I certainly think the Bulletproof Coffee thing can be misinterpreted. And, you know, as you've well. spoken at length with Danny um, at Sigma, it's it's, you know pouring pouring fat on your diet like that might not be the best approach for fat loss um certainly but yeah i I don't know i i think well let me let me let me let me interject here because i don't want to i don't want to get this i don't want people to get the sense that uh, i dislike uh dave i'm i'm a friend of dave i you know i've I've been on his podcast a couple times i've met him for dinner down in the bay area uh, once with my wife and mutual friends, uh, I I had dinner dinner with him in Austin, Texas. We spoke we spoke and we spoke mutually at one or two different conferences. Um, I, I have this, uh, you know, when I lived in France, there was this there's this saying about some people, and it goes like this: "Si il n'existait pas, il fallait l'inventer." It means it means that if he didn't exist, we'd have to invent him, right? So, um, <laughs> so Dave is kind of that. You know, I've been to dinner with him where he where you know what was served at the dinner wasn't something he could tolerate or whatever. So he brings like the you know boxes of sushi from Whole Foods, and he always has a thing of grass fed Kerrygold, you know, Irish. Uh, unsalted Kerrygold butter in his pocket, and he brings that out on the table. And he start he he literally cuts off chunks of butter and puts it on his sushi and eats it. Now you can look at that two ways, right? And I look at it two ways myself. It's like, well, that's ridiculous. But on the other hand, it's like, who does that? I love it, right? <laughs> so yeah, so let so I you know I mean. I mean, uh, I just put on my Ketotard Chronicles the other day. You know, he has his new product now called Fat Water. It's like, yeah, that's what that's what we need. We need fat in our water now, right? So I guess I would close it off by saying, yeah, I'll be as critical about Dave and his products and kind of his kind of like ridiculously overhyped, man- magical, bulletproof, magic suit, whatever – but on a personal level, I like him, and the and the, and the cool thing about him is that is that it, the, it, all of this all the criticism rolls off his back like water. He does not he doesn't go after people. So yeah, so I don't mind at all saying like let's look at both sides of the thing. And and are there some good things you can glean from Dave Asprey? Sure, sure, right? Does he and, not, does he and, not react like you know because. After what he you does just not. said, yeah, but no, he's not. He does. But, but he, even to he you, never, like d- what? when you when no. you see him and he knows your position on his well, brand, like and, you know, I haven't seen him since then. But you know what? I, I get it. I have a good sense of people. He probably laughed. I mean, look at look for it. He has he has a uh, he has a, uh, a he 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 does have. I think he wears asbestos underwear or something. It probably protects him from something or other. But you know, look at look at how he allowed himself to be roasted by J.P. Sears. In the mm-hmm. did you see those? The, there's the you know J.P. Sears is the guy, the ultimate spiritual yes. guy. And you, 
Dude. And yeah. JP, JP did a did a roast of Dave, like with Dave standing right there, right? So so Dave has the ability to do that. So that's another good thing we can say on his behalf, right? Which I'm happy to do. You know, everybody should look at this stuff in full context. Right? They should, and that's the difficult thing about, I guess, talking about these things in like soundbite. What we have to kind of make sure we cover some of the more more of the bases. Um, but yeah, no, I just very, very interested to hear your opinion. And just, just also, you mentioned Mark Sisson as being someone who you think is really legit. Who do you think are kind of the handful of the, 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 the top guys out there when it comes to um, learning about nutrition and fat loss and stuff like that? Like, who are your go-to? Well, yeah, yeah. On the uh, 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 Sisson, Sisson, I mean, it's an easy thing. Sisson, uh, Rob Wolf, uh Art Devaney is on Facebook now, again, with some reservations. You know, uh, I think that there's some stuff that, and, you know, he he banned me because I'm like, look, you know, you got to kind of look at the history of grains and stuff. And, and if, you know, after years of just outright, if you if you outright dismiss something, you don't really kind of look into it, then you got to you got kind of a problem. And then if other people come up with good arguments, at least that you should look in and you just like, you know, dismiss something, uh, not so good, but, but, uh, uh, Mark. Okay. And then, and then on the more nutrition side, I really like what Marty Kendall is doing with his optimizing nutrition, uh, page on Facebook, uh, Alex leaf. Um, these are some of the, the, the newer guys in terms of nutrition, at least newer from my perspective. I don't make it a point to follow like who's new and who's up and coming, who has the most popular outlets or whatever. Um, you mentioned Ted in terms of guys who are, who like work at kind of both ways, um, on the, uh, on the low carb and ketogenic side of things. Uh, I, I like what Ted does. Um, in terms of, of the exercise stuff. I mean, you know, we've already mentioned it, you know, Skylar Tanner, um, Keith Norris. Yeah. I think, you know, him, uh, Doug McGuff, you know, from way back. Interestingly, interestingly, even before I got into this thing, when I, when I start, when I started figuring out on myself about the whole intensity versus time in the gym, I, I went to the bookstore and I ended up getting this book by John Little. Right. That, that took it that took it to kind of a, a principled max. Well, what if what if you could do what if you could hold a load for like two seconds? Right. A max contraction. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like. A th- yeah. It's, it's this book I read way. And then, you know, and then, uh, you know, after I knew Doug and I've, I, I, I also I, I actually spoke at a, a, con- a conference down in Austin with at the same time with so dave asprey was there and doug mcguff there and skyler spoke at that as well and that's when skyler put us through that that work but i've been friend skyler has been a commenter on my blog free the com since like day one back in 2008 you know i just texted him yesterday i said hey i'm going on lawrence neal's show and he texts back he says he's a good guy you know and, and <laughs> i was just at a conference uh, in I just spoke at a conference in Orlando, the tw- a 21 convention, which is a men's conference deal. But the but the the speaker there was um, was uh, Bay. What's his What's his Drew name? Bay. I don't know. Drew Bay. I didn't know. I didn't know him personally, and I was busy uh, uh, at the time. But I caught just enough of it. I'm like, and I'm like, I like, I text Skyler. I said, I said, do, do you know this guy, Drew Bay? And he's like, oh, we're all in the same thing forever now, because it was like, yeah, he's he's preaching the he's preaching the word right there, you know. So, yeah, yeah big, big fan of Drew. Uh, he's been on the show multiple times. I did a roundtable oh. with Drew, uh, Skyler, and another guy called Ryan Hall, who are all kind of high intensity training experts, which was really really cool. Yeah. So no, yeah. it's a lot of fun. That's so cool that you all know each other and collaborate and stuff like that. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a link to my. You know, I actually um, back at uh, Ancestral Health Society eleven, which was at uh, UCLA, the very first one for the HS or Ancestral Health Society. Um, uh, Skyler and and um, 
and Keith Norris did a did a dual presentation there. And it was the first time I met Skylar face to face. We had a good time. But I have a blog post because we we are we have like we 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 fuck with each other all the time. Put it that way. All right. So I got a blog post. I'll send you the link to it after we got because I I have to get you a bunch of other stuff like you said. So I'll get that to you. No so worries. I want to talk to you a little bit about grains. Um, I get a little bit confused mm-hmm. about this. You know, grains, whole grains should be avoid. Because you did talk about in one podcast the benefits of the, the the high mineral and vitamin content in whole grains, and yet you hear people talking about the inflammation caused by uh, gluten and various other things. How how do you think about this? Where where do grains and whole grains sit in a healthy diet? Well, first of all, first of all, you know, grains, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you look at, um, here's what I, here's what I, um, I think to put it in a, uh, uh, a, uh, seed shell, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, to put it in a, in a seed shell or a nutshell, um, it is, it, it, it to me, you when you have mountains of evidence that something is healthy and and i did a whole series on whole grains at free the animal and we were looking at whole grains we were looking at uh the difference between um whole grains way back the way they were done and you know the more super refined and not only super refined but now with the fortification like iron and stuff like that all because women might be anemic so let's so let's get the male population into iron toxicity from uh, from adding iron to to the uh, to staple foods staple foods right it's not quite like adding iodine to you know, making iodized salt, you know, that's like something you sprinkle on something. We're talking about putting uh, a, 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 a metal mineral into something that is a food staple, right? It's pretty, pretty fucking stupid. I mean, just on the surface, right? If you just, it doesn't, it's like uh, almost a priori to me, which, which means that you don't even have to get up off the couch to know it's fucked up. Um, so, so you've got, if you look back and you look at population growth, well, where did it start? It started with agriculture and a big part of that was the harvesting of grain. But do you know, and just to, this is an aside, but there's a, there's a cool paper by economists out there. Do you know where the European population and urbanization exploded? I mean, like unheard of. And you're Irish. You'll love. Well, you're not Irish. You're English, living in Ireland. Correct. I got. I got to get that right. Right. So be sure and mention it to Dan it's, even. But <laughs> it's confusing. I know. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the introduction of the potato. I mean, if you look at the gra- the population and ur- urbanization graph, it precisely correlates with introducing the potato into western europe and the population just took off like crazy and urbanization so all of these things and then you think back and you're like all the paleo thing and you're unaware of it you were ignorant of it and that's there's it's fine right what i i don't have a problem with being unaware being ignorant and so on what i have a problem with is when you're confronted with it and you go like well this is our paradigm. Shut the fuck up. Well, you, you know, then then I'm going to make you feel like an idiot, right? That's where you cross my line, right? And I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a big name or or anything like that. Um, so it's, it's what I do. So okay, so population exploded with the introduction of potatoes. Yes. Um, oh, so to get back to yeah, okay, sure. to get back to grains, to grains, whole grains. Here's the thing: to think about a grain. You know, it's kind of like thinking about anything that you that's edible that provides nutrition to us. You, you know, people tend to think of it as like, well, what's in it for us, right? Rather than thinking about it like, well, this grain, it has all these things inside of it. What are they for? 
It's to make the grain survive, right? So what they do, so all these different things in it, right? It's just like when we eat a when we eat an animal nose to tail, right? If we if if, if if we were able to just swallow the whole animal whole like a snake does or, you know, a reptile does or anything, you literally get the complete nutrition of that thing. Well, that's what we do with a, with a grain. So maybe, maybe some of them, some of the things are better than other things, right? Right? So, but the, what they do is they pick out these little things, you know, like phytates and this anti-nutrient and da 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 Well, those are there. Those are there for the grain, for the little seeds benefit, not for yours, right? But the thing is, if you if you if you actually uh, uh, use the entire whole grain, then there is many yin and yang going on. Without getting you know super deeply into it, because that's a, the beyond the the scope of this podcast. But the thing is, is for every for every bad thing in it, there's a good thing that balances it, right? It's for the grain itself. Same thing with eggs, right? There's certain things, there's certain anti-nutrients and even, a, and even a whole egg, like what is it? Biotin or something like, I, you know, there's so many things you can, you can mention, but we eat the whole egg anyway. And so you can eat the whole grain, but on the other hand, you can even confound that because the French eat a third more wheat than Americans do, and they're not huge uh, fans of whole grains. You know, they 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 eat baguettes, and that's pretty much refined white flour. But it's not fortified either. So there's a there's a uh, another aspect of it. But I, I here's the thing: I just, I eat I eat grains. I eat some refined. I eat some whole. I just don't really make it a staple of my diet, you know, but I don't, but so, and that's good because I can make myself a sandwich if I want to. I can have some toast with my eggs if I want to, for fuck's sakes, right? <laughs> and and when, once you do and you're like, hey, I'm fine, I feel fine, I feel fine, right? I'm not like pouring on the pounds again or anything like that, but I'm enjoying life better, right? Right. Um, so... Yeah, because I'm just trying to understand. I'm always trying to wrap my head around and reconcile a lot of the debates in the, in the diet world to try and help, you know, myself and my friends and my girlfriend just live a little healthier and help achieve, you know, our, our body composition goals um, and obviously help the listeners as well. <laughs> that, should yeah. be, that should be a primary. Um, <laughs> sure should be. Now, so I'm just trying to so, – so what I've really understood lately is, you know, really we should be prioritizing protein and that, you yeah. know – Certainly, I've reflected this in my own way of eating, and which we'll come on to. But um, so, making protein the, the primary focus, and then you know, I tend to go low carb probably because I'm a little scared. But you know, even if I did eat more carbohydrate, it probably wouldn't make a huge difference. Um, but yeah. is the is the mechanism here? You know, if we're eating too much and we're carbohydrate, is it because you know appetite's not being suppressed? You know, there's protein leverage in play. We're trying to find more protein and can overeat carbohydrates more easily is that is that do you think what is leading to um you know a lot of people who tend to eat higher carb to be over fat or is that a cognitive bias coming into play from my side well uh i think i think it's certainly on the right track to simply target lean protein as an important part of your diet um and that can vary. Um, you know, I like the number 100 grams minimum per day for almost anybody. Um, I like the, I, you know, people always, you know, this many grams per pound of lean body mass. And I'm like, I'm like, look, if you're, if you look into lose weight, if you're fat and looking to lose weight, um, or if you're, uh, uh, trying to make gains in the gym, either or, because it's almost kind of the same thing, just a different context. If you know, you know, yeah, uh, one gram per pound of body weight. You know, you weigh two hundred pounds, two hundred fifty pounds, two hundred to two hundred fifty pounds of 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 of, of protein, and t and try to target lean. Now, if you target lean protein, then that gives you some carbohydrate headroom because. Carbohydrate and fat 
really don't go together in nature, right? So they should kind of be in, inversely related. So I eat quite a bit of potato, for example. But I, but I tend to, like, boil them or roast them or bake them. And I don't add a pre- a just a little – if I roast them, I, I can roast, like, two pounds of potatoes you know, on a cookie sheet in the oven – 450 degrees for 30 minutes, just lots of salt and pepper, lots of salt, a little pepper, however much you want. You know, I was low carb for a long time and I just, I did a potato hack where you eat nothing but plain potatoes for like seven to 10 days. And so I started eating them like eat eat like a half a pound or a pound of potatoes in a sitting, bang, my blood glucose was over 200, right? In three days within, and they take, Three four hours to clear. Within three days, it was topping out at at uh, 130 to 140. It would be clear in an hour to an hour and a half. So I call it metabolic exercise, right? So it's kind of like the couch potato. So someone who sits on the couch and he, he lives on the fourth floor, and one day the elevator's broke, and he has to take the stairs, and he runs up the stairs, and his heart rate is at th- over 300 beats per minute. He says, "See, I can't handle exercise at all." Right now, you understand how ridiculous that is. But that is exactly how I see the low carb world when they say, "Oh, I can't, I can't do carbs, so I, my blood sugar just goes out uh, crazy." Well, you don't, you never get any meta. You, 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 you have, you have a blood glucose insulin response couch potato for a metabolism. Lack, so, of, lack of so, metabolic flexibility is that fair exactly. to say? you have no flexibility right you've locked yourself into this and it's a it's a self-confirming paradigm because they can they they can just anytime anytime anyone raises the question they say well i was just at a party la- uh, the other day and i had some french fries and my blood glucose went to 200 i just can't handle them well <laughs> yeah it's so it, I just want – that's what you th- should think. You should think of the couch potato who knows he can't exercise because when he do- does, he huffs and puffs and his heart rate goes uh, uh, crazy, right? And it's, it, is, it is literally the same thing. Tell me, about, tell me about the potato hack. What were your results like from that? What did the diet look oh, like? Oh, yeah. I, well, the, the funny thing, there's several things going on. So – Potatoes, if you look on this, on the, there's some people who did a satiety study, and it's funny, like chips, what you call chips and crisps, what we call french fries and potato chips, um, are <clears throat> down at very low end of the spectrum. And then you have things that are, you know, high protein that are up at the top of the spectrum. There's one enormous outlier the most satiating food ever tested in the world and that's plain potatoes so if you just you just boil them or roast them and you don't make them like hyper palatable you it's just it's off the scale literally so the thing that what we found in the uh well i did we did many experience on uh, experiments on my blog you know with people in comments uh, collaborate. You just go to freetheanimal.com, click, you know, search it's potato diet, potato pack. You can see tons of stuff. But what we found, what we found is that it's very, very difficult. If you're going to limit yourself to potatoes, it's hard for the average person to eat a, more than about 1,500 calories per day. And you don't have to eat anything else because you're just not hungry. It completely... It does a couple things. So it's satiating, but it's probably satiating for neurological reasons. You know, if you read Stephen Guine's book, you know, um, what is it? Um, yeah, I forget the name of it, his, his latest book. Even, even Rob Wolf has one that he addresses some of the neurological stuff in his Wired to Eat yeah. book. But, but so it kind, it, it, it kind of rewires our satiation signals. And, it, and to me, it also kind of rewires, if you do it a few days, kind of rewires your reward circuitry. It's like, so you, you kind of become meh about food. Meh. Food, you want to eat? Meh, meh, meh. A couple of you questions know. on the potato hack, though. Um, what what Do you know what the mechanism is for why it satiates you? Because, like, on paper, I can't think why that would be and two how do you comply when if you don't put butter on a potato in my book it's just not that pleasurable 
Well, okay, so for yeah, it's it's tough. There's some varieties like the reds and the golds uh, are 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 a little tasty. In fact, the golds plain after a few days they taste like they have butter on them. You know, now I, and you can use spices, salt, and another thing I love is malt vinegar. You know, it's kind of like. You pretend you're eating fish and chips, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> Sounds good. So, yeah. No, the, the, uh, no, but the, the, the vinegar, salt, pepper, stuff like that uh, works pretty good as, as kind of a thing. But it's kind of funny. If you get through it, then they start tasting better and better to you. Uh, so, yeah, at, at first it does take the thing. It, t- it, t- it takes the will to say, well, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to at least give it like, you know, a reasonable two to three days. I mean, you're not going to die. Right. And it's just, and it turns out that way you, you, in fact, we had people, this was hilarious back in the blog, back in the blog years ago when I had, I had people, you know, we said, we're going to try this. So I even had like many years of low carb people on low carb diets for many years, give it a try. And you know, and here's what they, here's what uh, many of them said. He's they're like, I've been peeing on keto sticks for years and years and years, and yet, and I've never had such deep purple until I did the potato hat. Now, why? <laughs> because of caloric deficit. Because right. they were satiated, they couldn't eat more, and so they got into deeper ketosis than from their from their you know gluttonous low carb diet and which is another problem with low carb is it's is it's, it it attracts people who have a very gluttonous nature right so they, they want to like load on and they, they want to load on stuff and then they find out well hell I'm gaining weight and which is a huge problem for women uh, over yeah. 30 and 40 yeah, they're all over the place I've been doing this yeah, and it's dumb. It's fucking stupid. You hear it's like I've been at this for six months and I've gained forty pounds. It's like, why didn't you stop after three or four weeks? Because <laughs> it's too enjoyable, probably. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, they're gluttons. With, they're gluttons. Is the is a potato hack that healthy though? Like, is it because you know how nutritious are potatoes to live on? Oh, they're, huh, I'll send you a link. I actually did the numbers. A potato, calorie for calorie, is about the same nutrition as, as red meat. It's a few different. Actually, it, reg- it edges out red meat in terms of vitamins and minerals. Potatoes are crazy nutritious. That's why people can live on them. Live on them. Now, in terms of, I don't recommend it for long term. I should be short term deal for for lean people. You can do it just to kind of rewire your brain, get a brain reset, you know. Kind of thing for the palatability. If you find yourself always craving stuff, it really does a good job resetting that. Um, for overweight people, you know, periods of seven to ten days are good. You know, I, I wouldn't rec. If, now, if you're like this guy Andrew in uh, this guy in Australia, Andrew weighed over three hundred pounds. He did it for a whole year, but he had he had like one hundred fifty pounds or more to lose, right? So, and he he didn't seem to have any health adverse health. Uh, effects from it at all and so uh you know when people worry about lean mass loss i say i say look up the uh look up the the uh, studies done on the i think there was eight or ten um hunger uh fat uh, hung, uh you know uh hunger uh, what is it hunger strikers uh, the ira irish Republican army way back in the 80s right they all died between 60 and 90 days they literally starved themselves to death and they actually they, they studied them Right. And during that in that time, water only, they lost 95 percent of their fat mass, but only an average of 18 to 90, 19 percent of lean mass. So all this thing of like, oh, if I don't eat, you know, so uh, on the other targeting protein, I think is great for helping to main to to, of course, to maintain. But I think it's the best thing is just satiation. It just it pushes out other stuff. And if you're doing if you're doing exercise in the gym, but the but the kind this freaking out about you know too low a protein because a potato only has like what five ish five ish five to ten percent protein depending on the variety, but it is a complete protein, so you actually you can live on it. But but should you do that? No. But here's another here's another way to do that. I got a guy. He's an older guy. He'd never been able to. He was in my blog and never been able to lose weight. He didn't particularly care for the potato only hack, 
He said, I just, I got to my most, he's in his 60s, got to my most leanest shredded ever by one little thing. Before every single meal, I eat three to six pounds of plain potatoes. It's not three to six pounds, three to six ounces. I was going to say. Uh, yeah, three to six ounces of plain potatoes before every meal. It kicked in those satiation signals. He ate less, and he lost more weight than he'd ever been able to do from anything else. So we shouldn't be worried about the carbohydrates and potatoes elevating insulin and locking in fat stores. That's all. It's all down Fuck to calories. No. Fuck no. I just. I'm so tired of that bullshit. Yeah. I'm so tired of the bullshit. Right? It's, it's, yeah. Calories. Calories matter. Have you had Lyle McDonald on your on your show yet? Not yet. I tried. I tried reaching yeah. out, but not yet. Not yeah. successful yeah. yet. Yeah, he's been on Danny's a, uh, uh, two, three times, I think. Yeah, he's, it's like he's good, right? He's good. And he'll give you all the study shit. But, you know, and I fought against this for years. And, I, and you know, I don't – Martin Burkhan as well. You know, I wish I, I worked with him for about six months maybe yeah. on his uh, lean gains thing. And I just wish I'd have listened to him back then because I got some – I got really – unfortunately, I got injured because I was too old – to try to get the gains at, in deadlift and and uh, and squats, and so that kind of set me on the bench for a while. I ended up having surgery. That's not his fault. I was pushing it too hard for too long, you know. And you know, had I took and taken another six months to get to you know three hundred twenty five pounds of dead, you know, starting from like one thirty five to three twenty five in six months and doing it for like five reps and stuff, it just was too much for me. So now I just you know I do Doug's Big Five on machines and that's good. It's good, you know. And I and I and I don't get worried. I, in fact, I I was doing the um. There's an app. I was doing the strong list five by five for a while, and I I made really good quick gains on that. But the the this is a gym up here in the mountains. They don't have a proper bar to. They don't have proper equipment to position the bar for standing <coughs> overhead presses, right? So I set it up on a bench, and then I try to clean it, and I get I do a tennis elbow kind of uh, injury. And those fuckers take forever to heal, man. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> now it's interesting how you've uh, how your sort of exercise regime has evolved. Um, just just back on diet for a moment. Um, so I've recently been obviously talking to Dr. Ted Naiman, had him on the show a couple of times, as well as uh, Dr. Sean Baker, who's kind of leading the charge in terms of the zero carb movement on Twitter. Um, he's literally just eating red meat and nothing else. And uh, I know you shook your head there a little bit, but I've kind of embraced it and I've got really good results. So yeah, what are your thoughts on zero well, carb? Well, well, I, I don't, I don't like, I, like I tell people, I say, I say, you know, I don't, I don't buy anything as a, I've done zero carb. I've done, but I'm, I'm, when people say zero carb, I'm like, what, do you mean a meal? Right. (laughs) Or do you mean a day? You mean three days? Do you mean a month? This is a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So as a lifestyle, absolutely not. I think it's stupid as shit. Frankly, I mean, you asked for my opinion. I think as a lifestyle, it's stupid as shit, but, um, in fact, it was funny. I just just a bit ago, there's a, a, a woman on. In fact, it's posted Keto Tired Chronicles who did uh, zero carb for six months, and her cholesterol is over 500. And you know, and and you know, you go all, back in the day, people were like, well, the cholesterol, blah 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 blah, it doesn't matter. You know what? 500 is probably going to be a fucking problem, right? So if you have 500 cholesterol probably going to be you're 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 getting into the genetic disorder disorder of hypo or hypercholesterolemia or whatever it is at that point right so she 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 just ups her carb to like 60 grams a day and you know her her cholesterol's you know less than half of that in in time um so but i eat zero carb meals all the time You know, I mean, not all the time. That would be a lifestyle. But like regularly, it's like, hey, I'm just going to have this steak, right? Just eat the steak. Sometimes I eat 
a almost 100% card meal. Sometimes I go a few days. I'll go a few days with, it's just what I have in the house. It's like, okay, I've got this in the house. So it may be a lot of fruit and potatoes, or it may be a lot of leftover meat or stews or braises that are uh, anything. I'm like, I'm kind, I gotta say, I'm really getting, I'm really, when, when you start talking lifestyle, I'm like, Whoever ate like that anyway? I mean, even Paleo Man ate by seasons. What he, so I suppose you could call that a seasons lifestyle, right? Which is, but it's not the same effing fruit. The bears out here are trying to get fat right now by gorging on berries, right? Whereas just up in Alaska, you know, uh, actually, you know, it's probably just ending now, right? They're completely, they're completely almost 100 percent fat diet because they're catching salmon in the streams and they rip off the fatty skin and eat that and leave the protein carcass and bones for the birds right but then but then they're going to be gro- gro- uh, gorging on the wild berries is what kind, how do you describe that lifestyle right um so i i just i think people ought to get, need to get away from the whole idea of a lifestyle i think but what if they, uh, what they, if one you know like Sorry to interject, but what if one sure. if one really enjoys eating a zero carb diet? And let's just get definitions right here. So they they enjoy eating three to five pounds of high quality red meat every day, and that's it. And they probably do intermittent fasting, right? And they just enjoy that. Do you really think? And they comply with it with no issue. Um, and they've got good body composition and they perform well at their sport and blah, 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 and they sleep well. Do you really think that's still problematic? I mean, I know you mentioned that lady with the high cholesterol, but you still think that's, that's plagued with potential issues. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure that there's, there's, everything's always on a spectrum, right? So, so you're, you're always, I mean, I've been looking lately at this, uh, at the stuff, uh, you know, cause people are, people are constantly trying to claim that, you know, a ketogenic diet or, uh, or ex, uh, exogenous, um, exogenous, um, ketone supplementation is great for sports performance and so on. And, and I always laughed at it just because it's like, you know what? It's kind of like, it's kind of like low, you know, low carb for bodybuilders or anything. I mean, dudes, these guys, it's their profession. It's what they make money on. Certainly, if that's going to be the, the most high performant way for them to earn a living in, in high level competition, then we would know about it because they would fit. I mean, who discovered super high protein? Bodybuilders did naturally, right? Of course. But then who also discovered, who also discovered carb loading, gain big weight, and then cutting with super low carb and super low fat at the same time? Bodybuilders, right? So all of these, they know, they know all the shit, right? So and to, to think, to think, it's it, it, it because it's on a level of fucking religion at this point where they're coming in like, oh, it's, it's just got to be, it's got to be because your body will will do this and it'll do this magic trick and this magic trick. Bullshit. Show me the fucking money. Show show me the trophies, and I guarantee you that most of the trophies, ninety nine. 0.9% are going to be guys who follow the conventional wisdom, which is if you're in highly competitive sports, probably pretty much carbohydrate and oftentimes pretty low fat, good to high amounts of protein. It's not, it's not, it's not complicated, right? Now, are there outliers? Or is there the guy who can do a ketogenic diet and perform? Sure. Sure, there's outliers, but it ain't gonna be. It ain't. It's probably not going to be your best shot. Now, if you're talking about, you're talking about a lifestyle. It's like, I, if you enjoy it and it works for you, fine. It's gonna. It's 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 either it's gonna it's gonna it's either gonna work for you or it's gonna work for you until it doesn't work for you, right? And and hopefully you have the sanity to not say. Well, I've been, it's not been, not been working for six months. 
but you know, so I'm, I'm still doing it. Well, <laughs> you know, how about when it doesn't work anymore, stop, but otherwise, you know, and then you have to, you also have to factor in age too. You know, I could get away with anything when I was in my twenties and thirties, uh, when I hit 40, no, not so much, right? Different things happen. Yeah, no, fair enough. It's uh, really interesting to get your opinion on that. I've been wanting to ask you that one um, quite a bit as it's uh, it's been a hot topic on the show. And God, you're going to get so many hateful comments after this. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Because everything I do, I only do it if... if uh, and love and hate are the two sides of the same coin of passion. You know, I, what I try to, what the only thing I really, really always try to do is avoid, avoid, if, if people are indifferent to it, then I've failed. But if they love it or they hate it, then I've hit my mark. Fair enough. And uh, I think there will definitely be some of my listeners who actually, uh, certainly that what you just said will resonate with them. Um, what's your take on supplements? Uh, how, you know, how important are they? Should, should we be using supplements? Can we get everything we need from whole food? Where do you stand on that? Well, according to Dave Asper, you need about 80 a day. <laughs> 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 There's a video out of there with him like downing 80 supplements. Um, uh, I think I think there might be a, 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 a couple important ones. Um, on top of my list is uh, D3, but not to the, some of these crazy doses. Uh, you know, and it, since it's fat soluble, you know, it's not something you need to take every day. You can, you could take, you know, two to 5,000 IU once a week. You probably be, you probably be fine. You know, unless you're, you have some weird thing that doesn't absorb, you know, I've test I tested myself a few times to make sure that when I do take it, it does raise. I like to, I like, I forget what the unit of measure is now, but I like oh, to stay in like, yeah, yeah. I like to stay in the a 50. Uh, range. I think there's another, uh, you know, people use two, uh, two different ones. Uh, another one is, is kind of obscure. Um, it's a, it's a K2. Um, and it's, uh, it's something that it's something that kind of goes back to Weston price, uh, uh, prices findings, um, which kind of goes into deep rabbit hole. We probably don't want to get into, but anyway, I've researched it pretty well, and you know, you could actually have Chris Masterjohn, uh, PhD, on the on the show um, to discuss uh, vitamin K two. Um, it's the there's there's about nine different subforms of it. Uh, MK seven and MK four are the ones that are the most studied. I use a uh, I use a, a mix of it from um, uh, LEF Life Extension Foundation. Um, that's kind of super K2 and it has both of them. So those are my two really go to supplements. And every once in a while I pop magnesium and because the whole absorption issue is, uh, is always up in the air about the different form malate or, you know, um, uh, citrate, whatever. So I'll kind of switch off which ones I take. Uh, if it gives me the shits, I know I'm absorbing it. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a guy. I had a guy in, on Facebook the other day, this is the, just a joke story, I had a guy on Facebook the other day uh, talking about something he was eating that gives him the shits, and I said, I said I'll tell you what, you, you want to cure this right away? Go get, go pop yourself three grams or 3,000 3, milligrams of magnesium. It'll fix them right up. <laughs> That's how mean I am. <laughs> beautiful beautiful great great advice um okay uh, anything else you want to add to that or is that well you know here's the thing i think i i, I like i prefer to get the rest of my uh supplements supplements from um uh you know kind of the obscure very deeply nutritionally dense food like uh like liver uh ruminant liver is hugely um um, uh, nutritious. It's crazy. It's off the scales, right? And if you don't like that, maybe you like maybe you like German liverwurst or Braunschweiger, or maybe you like French pate, um, uh, and you can get it that way. There are some desiccated liver 
supplements, which I don't really consider a supplement. It's just basically the it's basically the organ that's just freeze dried and put in a capsule. So that's so that just, you don't as, have, just as good as eating liver, having it in the desiccated tablets. I think so. Yeah, okay. uh, you can get them for you can get the get the ones from Argentina. Uh, you know, grass fed uh, beef, and it's just it's just all liver. It's just free diet. All the nutrients are there. And, you know, if you get, you can get, if you take it like per the dose, it's like the equivalent of, of getting about two to three ounces of actual eating liver. Now, I, we do liver a lot. You know, it's, it so happens that both my wife and I um, grew up eating it. And in my case, it was, we, uh, my family were deer hunters. So a lot of it was a venison liver, some, some of, sometimes same day of the kill. So that was, uh, that was, nice. uh, always good um and so yeah organ organ type meats in terms of land food and then um oysters oysters are the seafood equivalent of and they're crazy like like, like a dozen oysters i think has uh, 140 calories but the nutrition is off the scale so i like mm-hmm. to eat or you know oysters mussels and you know you get you get the canned smoked ones you know stuff like that and and uh, you know sardines uh, canned sardines are good because they're bottom of the food chain so you're getting less of the buildup of uh, of any toxicities you know not that I'm like freaked out about toxicities I you know I'll eat my salmon and my tuna especially tuna is the bomb for the protein man <laughs> I mean it's a it's a great source of protein if you want to go low fat high protein. I mean, 30 grams of protein in a single, you know, water-packed can and almost no fat, no carbohydrates. Should we it's just worry like, about the, the metals in, in things like tuna, <sighs> EPA, all that stuff? Would you think well, I, you know, you can get, you can go, you can get the more, um, uh, there's companies that do the line caught tuna that are the smaller tuna, not the big, enormous ones, you know. So, but then again, but then again, like if you're fearful of that, you know, eat sardines. So, you know, the, the small canned fish have, you know, the, the, re- the reason that the metals become a problem is because it just moves right up through the chain because the, most of the fish are carnivorous. So they eat a whole fish and they absorb that metal that was in them. And then when a bigger fish eats, right. you know, da, da, da. so, you know, um, it's like the, there's this comic from years back. You have three fish, you know, a little fish with a bigger fish behind it just about to eat it. And then behind that one is a huge fish about to eat it. And the captions are, for the little fish, there's no justice. But for the medium-sized fish, there's some justice. And for the big fish, it's like the world is just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get many jokes on the show, so it's, you know, it's, yeah, all right. <laughs> it's, it's good to it's good to mix. It's it up. one of those I saw when it, like forty years ago, and I like it just stuck in me. I like it just always makes me chuckle. So <laughs> it's a you know the perspective on justice, right? <laughs> so um, want to talk to you a little bit about exercise. Um, you you've written so much stuff on your blog. You've debunked so many things. Um, you know, all the way through from you know politics to diet and health and lifestyle. Did you? I couldn't find a lot in terms of debunking exercise. Have you done any research into what protocols you found to be most effective for people for health and muscle gain and things like that? No, uh, no, I'm 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 certainly not an expert there. What I did was go out and. Um, you know, I had the, when this whole started, I lived like five minute walk from a gym, um, in an in urban, in, you know, uh, environment. And I started off just like I said, when I realized that time and intensity, uh, I, so, so I got a personal trainer who happened to be a guy with a, with a, a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology. So he was no idiot. Um, and some of the other trainers were, you could just tell, uh, by just looking at them in the gym. So, um, I did very, I did very well. And then from that I moved and, and he actually, Martin Burkan lean gains came to me and said, Hey, uh, let, because you know, my blog was popular I was going to do a, a little bit of a series on Martin's stuff, which it did. And, um, uh, so he consulted me for free and I got my trainer on board with it. We did the whole, 
thing for about six months, I made really, really good gains. Like I said, I, I did the injury thing and it kind of put me out of it. Um, but, uh, all the, but then I was like, you know, I know Doug, Doug commented on, used to comment on blog every now and then I, I, I've uh, met him. I met him a couple times at conferences and stuff. And he's a great guy. He's he's right up my alley. Political philosophy as well. Libertarian kind of dude. And and um, and just a, so, so such a competent guy. And so you know, I I read Body by Science, and I'm like, and every and you know, people are talking about Big Five and stuff. So and I toyed around with that, and I'm like. I'm like, this is just really great. And then, of course, I'd already known Skyler, and I, but I did, and I, you know, Keith, his his buddy Keith Norris, uh, I think does quite a bit more volume of of exercise than just the Big Five and stuff. But uh, and then having been worked out by Skyler within it, so I think I think especially for the older guy, I, I'm like, I don't really need to debunk anything because I just kind of migrated into what worked from the start into it's more been for me about just what may be a little bit better and and maybe this is maybe this is even better if you're a young guy if, man if you're 20 something 30 something lean gains and keto gains which are pretty much almost the same except that uh that lean gains probably more more protein uh, and um, does have carb higher carb days on the uh, on the rest days, but otherwise they're it's so similar. Um, but I think it's really good for the for the more for the more younger folk. I think for the older for as you, the older you get, because injuries injuries suck. I've had a cervical herniation that made me want to cut my right arm off for three months. It resolved itself. Then I had an L four L five lumbar herniation which made me want to cut my left leg off which for a year and a half because i thought it would resolve like the other thing but it turns out that my dad and two of my brothers had the exact same herniation with all of us within about a year of each other so it's really uncanny and all of us ended up just having the surgery and you're like better within three hours so so you know screw it um, and I just don't want to, I just don't want to, and I just got this little tennis thing because I dicked around too much. I wasn't uh, careful. So I think for me at this point, I'm like, you know, the HIT big five, sometimes I'll throw a little deadlift in there. Uh, once, twice a week, I tend to take a little bit more time at it. Sometimes I'll do two sets. You know, I don't think it needs to be like exactly like the 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 one single set because i kind of enjoy it after a while so maybe i'll do i'll do a couple sets at it try to duplicate the thing but that's i think i think it's 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 hard to say that at you if, if you're put if you're in your i'm 56 if you're in your 50s and beyond that that oh no you should way there's so much way better stuff you could do I just I just don't think so because I've tried a lot of stuff and um, I don't do cardio uh, I really I what I do is we, we live in the mountains here we hike and and I uh, you know get a get a good hike on you know uh, with with good ascent and descent um, in the space of a time and I think it's really you know uh, um, your friend Chris Hycock you know he's a huge hiker it's like every day he's out there in the hills yeah, and I see all the pictures he's um, yes I, I really really want to interview Chris yes you should <laughs> because you know he was he's he's original with me conditioning research he was feeding me links every damn day back in the back in 2007 he, eight, he, won't, nine. he won't come on he won't, he won't. Come on. no I've asked him more than anyone um, really, and I actually like that in a way because yeah. the reason he doesn't want to come on is because he thinks that you know there are other experts out there like yourself or others. People, he often, I'm not either. I'm he, not. He often mentions like Doug McGuff and Bill De Simone, and and then he says, you know, there's there's just well, I, I don't think he thinks he can add any value. But the very fact yeah. that he's not trying to. You know, I, I want someone on who just wants to talk about their experience, having learned from all these people and from yeah. their own experience. Like that is valuable. But I, to, I respect his decision. You know, he's done a, he's done a lot for me, and I'm sure other people because back in the day, his 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 what his deal was 
was I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to look at this stuff. And if I think it's valid, I'm going to shoot it on to these people who I think might, you know, run with it in some way or another. Maybe, maybe not. You know, I didn't certainly not everything, but every once in a while you'd send me something. I'm like, damn, I love that. Or damn, I hate that. And so that's kind of the that's what gets me to, you know, my blog goes to 2003. It has 4,600. Now, up until about 2013, 14. It was an average of a post per day for 10 years straight. Uh, I, I backed off to more like 250 to 300 posts a year rather than 365. But, you know, the question, a question was posed, what, what are the habits? And I, it's just like I, I, once I find something that I love or hate and that if I love it, some some other people might hate it, or if I hate it, some other people might love it. As long as I can get something that engages me and engages other people, then I that's just my favorite thing to do, and I write about it. And you know, I have to go into you know uh, closing the loop with Chris. Uh, he was just always great for a long, long time of of putting stuff in front of me that I didn't have time to go out and find myself. Right. So it was just, I really always appreciate the guy. Yeah. He seems to have done a great service in terms of like informing people with decent information on health and fitness. Um, yeah. That's certainly what I noticed. I mean, I've only really been aware of him and he'll fit his group on Facebook uh, for a few years and, and his book, he'll fit the ebook um, was really helpful for me in terms of introducing me to body weight, high intensity training. Um, uh-huh. So I, I thank him for that. And maybe one day he'll change his mind and he'll come. <laughs> The show but we'll we'll have to see about that um I, i'll go to i'll go to facebook and i'll tell him yeah if you could help Chris, me. <laughs> get the fuck on lawrence's show off man. he's gonna hate quit the whining yeah, yeah. <laughs> um just going back to your your exercise journey uh, i did see the blog post about uh your progress of lean gains which were really impressive the the gains you made um and i'll certainly link to that from from my show notes um could you elaborate on the type of gains that you made jeez it's been a long i think you know i was like when i started it was just started i was doing deadlifts at maybe you know 150 ish pounds and Within a few months, I was uh, I, I I have a video where I I broke three hundred for the first time, and uh, I think I it was three o three o five and something. I was psyched about that, and then you know and 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 not I, I three hundred twenty five was the highest and for about four I think four reps of three twenty five, and I don't honestly that's when I got the cervical herniation, so it could have been a stretching of the nerve in my arm. But holy shit, was that painful! And um, uh, then I, I, you know, I got back in after that ended, uh, and I, I got back in the gym and um, did did uh, you know built up with deadlifts again till I was I would think I at the time I uh, I got it I did some life change stuff and moved and everything, but I think I was back up to like two eighty at that point. Um, but uh, and I think it could, you know, the lumbar herniation could have been a genetic thing. My, my dad and yeah. two of my three brothers had it and the exact same things, exact same pain manifestation ever. And I, I did, I have heard that there is a genetic component to it. So I, I could, maybe I don't blame that on exercise, but the thing is, is that, is that at my age, I'm just, I'm really not aiming to be, uh, you know, just big, right? I'm pretty strong. I, I did a bunch of construction. This this uh, this went built out a whole basement, platforms, everything. You know, um, I can haul, I can hump around lumber all damn day long and dig out dirt and all that stuff. And that's that's what you call fitness, right there. <laughs> okay, so you know, the just because you can you can push weights and stuff in the gym. You know, how fit are you and how how does it re- really relate to getting shit done in your in your life especially if you have a house up in the mountains that takes one hell of a lot of labor to just, you know, overcome 
the environment, uh, the trees falling, the the cleanup of the debris so that you have a fire barrier, um, all of the stuff on and on and on. You know, there's I've got like literally it's about an acre of ground, and I probably have well over five hundred trees on it, wow. <laughs> and they dump a lot of crap. So it's a, it, there's a lot of work, and and we've always got plans. You know, we've got landscaping plans, and we've got uh, we're gonna be putting in a deck uh, out off of the master bedroom upstairs uh, this spring and and everything. So uh, what my goals are in the gym are probably not the same as a 22-year-old guy who's looking to get laid uh, by someone different every few nights. Um, so... Uh, which is under, an understandable goal. I've been there. But... 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 Um, but uh, you know, I want to be. I want to be fit. I, I'm the. I'm the. Uh, the cook, the master chef. A lot of food posts on my blog too. Good. Good food pictures too. So good recipes. So, you know, like it's like I do every a little bit of everything. But I want to. I want to be able to continue to always do that. And I think for me, I've just come to the thing where I just really can't do better. Then maybe the the big five with the with the with the with the occasional deadlift session once a week um, added on to it because I just really do I love the I just I love the whole body CNS thing that a that a heavy de- deadlift session does I I hate squats I really fucking let me reiterate I fucking hate squats I don't know whether I just have never developed the good technique to but they just seem comfortable. And fucktardedly ridiculous every time I'm in that squat thing and my back is arched up and I'm like, what in the fuck am I doing? Yeah. But a deadlift, it's like, ah, this seat, this feels so right, you know, every time I do one. So personal preference or maybe just my body, maybe the, the you know, center of balance is such that one works a lot better for me yeah. than, than, the, uh, than the other could be. Who knows? Or maybe I just am a lazy ass and I need to work at it, <laughs> work at it more. But I just really don't want to do squats that much. You know, I, I just I, I can do I can get on I can get on one, on one of the leg presses, be it an incline or whatever, and I can push really plenty of weight. Uh, you know, like an incline leg press, it's easy to do 400 pounds or more on that for some reps. So I don't think that I necessarily need to do squats. So yeah, fair play. How are you for time? Because I got a few more questions. And oh, I'm uh, good. I'm good. As yeah. long as you want to go. Yeah, cool. Um, so long as I don't get any more raps at the door from Halloween kids. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, last year, last year, it, see, it's dark. We live at the end of a dark cul-de-sac. It's pretty spooky, right? So we got we got none last year, thankfully. I hate <laughs> Halloween. I hate it because it makes the dogs freak out and bark. And, and you know, I we like the dogs. I don't like them to be freaked out. And there's no – why? So we can give people candy? Fuck that. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, – Anyway, yeah. yeah. So, wanted to ask you a few questions about the business and the blog. Um, one of the things I did recently, and I'm starting well, not that recently, but uh, a while ago, is I deleted a lot of old posts that I thought were just shit. Um, oh. And I wondered now if that was a bad idea. Um, do you have you ever done that? Have you ever done like a cleanse? Because you've got so much content, and I'm sure most of it is excellent, or if not all of it. Um, how do you think about that? One time, to- uh, a couple times, twice, where I got where I got myself into stupid shit over a, a week or two, and uh, in, in the first case, I'm not going to get into the details because that's why I deleted the shit. But um, in the first case, uh, it was pretty soon after where I just said, "Screw it." I didn't actually delete the post. I just said, I just basically cut out all the text so, and said, look, I moved on. You know, I may have put up another post that said why I was doing it. I can't even remember now, but it was just, it was done. Right. And in another case, in can you, another can case, you elaborate what that was about or not? I don't want to. No um, I just, because it's, it's ancient history now okay. it was a conflict with, a, with a few other people. 
and then and, and who are in the dietary uh, realm. Uh, but 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 it was it, it, it was it was it was something where um, um, I was uh, uh, unjustly dealt with, right? But I overreacted to it, and I carried it on too long. Um, and so that was the, 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 the deal in the second case, uh, it involved, it was years later, this involved a a completely different life experience, completely outside the blog when I was uh, living off grid in Mexico (laughs) of all things. And, um, really, uh, grated with the uh, expat community there, which I called the lost, uh, what are the lost gated community? The law, lo- what do I call it? The, the lost American suburb in Zacatitos, Mexico. I mean, you're talking about uh, feminist entitlement, soccer mom bullshit up the ass with a bunch of pussy boys who kowtow to it. And uh, I just didn't get along with it. But in the end, uh, yeah, I ended up getting like uh, cold cock from behind in a bar over it. Oh. as well so yeah and um uh so but after you know and i posted all a bunch of shit about it a lot of people loved it some people hated it you know just like how it always goes with me and uh after a couple of years in fact it wasn't too long it was a few months ago i said you know what i want to i don't want i i don't even like thinking about this is a it's a past chapter so i just went through and just outright deleted the maybe dozen posts or so, but that's the only time I've, uh, only time I've done that in terms of legitimate disagreements with, with people, even where I've been very abrasive, uh, no, those stay up. And in fact, in fact, I did a, a post, a series of posts, about 17 posts on how the Inuit people were never in ketosis ever. They've never been clinically measured in ketosis. And in fact, they have a genetic uh, mutation that, uh, almost prevents them from easily going into ketosis. That's another thing that uh, uh, Chris Masterjohn, PhD, can uh, can uh, speak to if you were to have him on. But I, part of the part of that huge debate was with Dr. Michael Eads of uh, protein power uh, and stuff. And and I, and I said some pretty abrasive things. He said some too in comments on his blog and on on Peter. You know, I don't know if you know hyperlipid Peter Dub. Give, he's uh, he's in the UK. He's a, a veterinarian in, in the UK. Uh, high fat nutrition type of guy, low carb, high fat nutrition type of guy. Pretty smart guy. Uh, but anyway, um, um, comments there and here and there. And so, but but you know, uh, those posts have always stayed up. But Mike Eads and I are good friends. We email each other all the time. Typically, not about diet stuff. It's more about like business because he's a he's he's a creator of the sous vide uh, um um uh, sous vide supreme machine so uh and if you don't know who mike eads is you know search the books protein power and so on great guy uh you know um i even stayed at his house overnight since after that whole whole thing so so i do have the integrity even if i get into it with somebody that no those posts don't come down so uh i even if i think it's like maybe i see i like the fact that i have that if you go back to my blog and see that you you might see it but that's why i make sure that there's a date on my post some bloggers don't put dates on their posts and that's because i haven't fucking got off my ass and written a post in three months so i don't want people to immediately know that this is an old fucking blog right so i i don't have to do that so my posts all have dates on them um so that you can so you can see that I update this blog regularly. I mean, rarely, but a few days go by. There's no post, but so I want them. So I want the date on there also, so that when people see it and they say, and so maybe I'm very firm about something, uh, they see the date. So then at least they wonder. Well, does he still think that? Maybe they go and uh, look at something more current. Where because I, I, you know, I love. I love to point out, and I'll link to my old posts sometimes and say I was wrong about this, or I what, or I, I, you know, I have this saying, I have this saying, everybody is wrong about everything all the time, and it's a fool's journey to constantly go out there showing how you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's better to take approach that you're wrong about everything all the time, 
but you're struggling with being just a little less wrong every iteration, every day, every iteration, every single time. You, I'm just, I'm a little less wrong than I used to be. And that's my, that is, that's just the way I approach everything. I love right? that approach. And I totally agree. And that's kind of the approach I try and take as well. Um, yeah. It's really funny because I asked you that question about deleting old content um, in the context that I've wrote posts that I don't think were very good. But it's just so funny how you immediately went straight to conflict. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Which typically is... that's, that's, yeah. Well, I, the, the other ones I think take care of themselves. And if anything, it shows that I evolve, you know, Pete, and this is one of the, one of the comments I get on my blog a lot. They say, they say, Richard, you always change in your mind. You see new stuff, you change your mind. You don't hold, there's so many people I could name that out there. And it's why it's you why have, you have, have no sunk cost fallacy, right? It's I don't have, yes, I do not have, right. I, that's what that is a thing i don't none of the stuff i do to make you know my coins here and there uh involve me holding any position whatsoever you know none nothing <laughs> you know and i just won't you you can't get deeply you know like well for let's take jimmy moore for example live in la vida low carb well, you're fucked now because <laughs> because you've always got to be living la vida low carb. You can't say, "Well, I don't believe in I don't believe in low carb. I really kind of like a, 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 a high protein, a moderate carb, low fat approach." On the living la vida low carb blog, <laughs> right? maybe it could you be like the happy high carb. <laughs> yeah, 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 and you, yeah. Until you don't like happy heart, high carb anymore. So, right. yeah. So uh, you can't. Um, you you you, you kind of got to be a little bit more general than that. And and you know, if you do uh, have affiliate relationships that lock you into a certain here we go dietary lifestyle, right? Lifestyle rather than hey, this is good food. It does. You can be vegan. This is good food. You can be zero carb. This is good food. See, so I prefer something like that. I mean, one of the things I make the most money off of on my blog is Elixir probiotic. Carl Seddon right there in the UK manufactures it, right? I make good money on that, but it's a probiotic. Vegan can, well, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe not vegan. It is bacteria, right? <laughs> <laughs> See how fucked hearted they are. Right? So, 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 yeah, you can, um, you can, you can, you can go to anybody and say it doesn't matter what your diet is; it's good for you, right? And the other way I, I make good money is the Amazon uh, associate thing. Now, I promote the stuff that I actually promote myself directly in the blog is always stuff I use, whether it's a book I read or a kitchen thing I use. Whatever you can be assured, if I promote it, I use it and I like it, right? Otherwise, just click the link and go shop for yourself. The, you know, get what you want, right? So those are the kind of things that I tend to prefer in terms of making my blog something that makes you know some money as kind of little cottage industry for me. But I, I have, I, I, I know, I knew a long time ago. And there's no way that I would ever make big money uh, with the way I do things by uh, with the way I do things, the way I write and everything, you know, people, um, you know, I'm not going to get a lot of direct sponsorships, anything like that, because, you know, wh what happens when I put up some post, you know, going after some sort of you know, religion or some sort of stupid shit philosophy or some sort of entitled feminist yeah. bullshit. What happens then? And they cut, you know, I, so I just don't want to ever be in that kind of a situation. And I also like to sleep well at night. So when I, when I do stuff, I was, I, I want it to be something I truly like and believe in. I'm not just trying to hype it and sell it. Um, and I sleep well at night. So, yeah, I appreciate that. It's interesting. Cause obviously I, you know, I've got, um, two sponsors who's, businesses i you know i picked very i was very selective because i it's very important like you in terms of promoting what you believe in that the sponsors and 
products and services are congruent with the value of my values and the values of the show. Um, yeah. But that being said, there is it definitely affects you um, in terms of you know what type of content you want to put out and it definitely makes you think twice so i'm quite happy with how it's going at the moment but i can appreciate from your perspective why you yeah. haven't decided to go down that down that road right yeah yeah um yeah and so and and you know if, uh, uh, if, for me for me uh, affiliate type of relationships are better because then they're then the um, then they're only you're only getting money based on uh, productivity, so it makes it difficult yeah. for them to say it makes them it difficult for them to say, well, I don't like what you post, but yet, well, you're sending me checks because I have, uh, it's actually selling stuff. So, uh, you know, that's kind of it's a it's just a better position to be in a results oriented uh, kind of a deal. Oh. Yeah. Um, do you mind elaborating on how the blog makes money? Yeah, uh, well, uh, pretty much I, I did. For the, uh, the 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 mainstay is actually the uh, Elixir uh, probiotic that's on the sidebar, and it's a it's a really you know uh, even if you're not going to buy it, you can, you ought to go in there and click. It's a, well, or you can just go to Elixir FTA. You know, not Elixir, Elixir, F-T-A dot com. That's a, a link that shuttles you over to my office. And read about it. It's really the most advanced pre, uh, probiotic. He manufactured, Carl manufactured, manufactures it in in his own facility. That, that means he cultures the actual probiotics and he encapsulates them in a in an environmentally controlled situation. For uh, he goes into the whole thing about how the capsule, because the idea is the capsule needs to survive all the way to your colon. Um, otherwise, you're just just if it breaks out, you take probiotics. Most of them just get eaten up by gastro, you know, in uh, en enzymes in your gastric thing. So you need to get it down to your colon. So that's the technology behind it. It's a patented technology. And, and, and the, and the, 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 he, he's on version four now in terms of testing and putting different things in it, the different strains in it that work the best uh, with, with, with his, uh, with people who, you know, he tests with it. So it's pretty, it's pretty, that's the biggest thing I make money on. And that can go, that can go, uh, you know, it can go a thousand, 2000 bucks a month if you want, you know, exact figures, it's not huge money, but you know, it uh, it works well for me. The second thing is Amazon, um, Amazon associates, uh, that's highly varied. It can be anywhere from a few hundred bucks a month to I've done I'm three, four thousand a month. You know, one time, one time a reader, I guess, was a fan of mine. I look on my thing, and someone must have been setting up a sports bar because there was like twenty HD TVs ordered. And this was back when they cost a couple thousand bucks a pop, so that was a good paycheck, you know. So sometimes you'll get stuff like that, and then the, then the real oh, you know, on, on the Elixir, the thing is, is that over sixty percent of people, sixty five percent of people reorder. So that's that's a that makes me believe in the product when sixty five percent of people reorder right so that's that's a really cool thing and i have kind of a, a special deal where i have a forever cookie so once someone orders then i get it for i get the the thing forever even if they just go there on their own and so that's the thing then that you know little little bits here and there from google adwords uh which is <clears throat> i don't mind it be, you know people laugh. it's actually something what funny because if i blog about something i hate There'll be ads for it from Google on the side, which cracks me up. It really cracks me. You know, some people would, do, and and actually, I have I have readers with enough of a sense of humor to kind of to kind of understand that that's mm -hmm. the way it goes. It's it can be hilarious, right? Same thing with Amazon. So if I drop, if I if I'm like doing this post about how fucked up Jimmy Moore's uh, 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 stupid, you know, eat more fat and pour more fat on, and I have a, an am, a little Amazon uh, thing I pop in the post, you know, there's all of his books for sale. <laughs> I just, I love, I, I just, you got to see the humor in that stuff. See, I like to, I love the humor in that stuff. And, and so then uh, another way, I've, I recently started a deal 
Uh, I used to be an options trader. I had I had business. I had a business for twenty years with twenty uh, thirty employees, a few locations, all that stuff. What type of business? Uh, what? What type uh, of business? Debt, uh, a debt restructuring business. I had about two thousand clients. We actually um, we actually got people out of severe levels of debt without bankruptcy. The, and these aren't deadbeat people. These are people with health issues or, you know, their kid goes out and, and, and wrecks the car and kills somebody, uh, you know, that sort of is in jail. Uh, these sorts of, th- of problems that come up with unemployment, you know, lost a job. Yeah, and so <clears throat> rather than then just file bankruptcy, we would go in and, and uh, work out deals with the credit card company. We would settle 2 to $3 million worth of credit card debt a month for about an average of 35 cents on the dollar. So we would get people out of debt in two to three years um, for a total of about 60 to 65% of what they came in with you know, two to three years later, mm-hmm. including our fees. Um, and so that's, that was, uh, that was what I did for 20 years. Um, the regulatory stuff with consumers just got to be, when I, when I saw that for a business making three and a half million a year, I'm paying 250 K to attorneys per year. I'm like, Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I know. I, you know, and so I'm like, so so I was one, and that was a, that was a thing. But uh, as part of that, I started trading options uh, full time for 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 quite a while, and got uh, you know pretty versed in that. And um, and then yeah, you know, I stopped that. It was it was it was it was again stressful. You sometimes you're you're hyper leveraged, um, and uh, you find yourself waking up at uh, you know two in the morning here on the West Coast and checking how the you know, market openings are going over in Europe and, you know, that's just not a healthy kind of uh, lifestyle and you start getting obsessed with it and, and everything. So I ultimately uh, unwound all that stuff and stopped, but then I ended up getting into a uh, Bitcoin in 2014. And so most recently, just two months ago, uh, I, I don't know if you've heard of Patreon. Yeah, uh, I'm on that too. <laughs> you are. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. So I'm on Patreon. I started a deal of, you know, how to trade cryptocurrencies. And uh, and I have a very, very simple pitch. It's five bucks a month. There's no upsells. There's no ads. There's no pop-ups. There's no premium content. You know, it's five bucks a month for everything I produce. And I just, I, I'm just, I'm just like a, a cunt hair away from, um, from 200 can you say cunt hair? Uh, I'm just cut hair away from 200 um, uh, subscribers in less than two months. In fact, I launched it on September 3rd, wow. so I'm three days away, and that's a, that's a net to me of just almost 900 bucks a month now. So that I started this little cottage business in the space of uh, of two months. And it's kind of, and I love, it's kind of the same, you know, I was already going in every day and looking at what the news is, what things are doing, what are Bitcoin doing, and, and starting to get into trading altcoins and all this other stuff. And, um, and I'm like, I'm doing this anyway, might as well write about it on this other platform. And it's just been the coolest thing I've, I've done in a long time. And so it, it's, it, I'm kind of maybe gradually kind of, you know, shifting into more of that, uh, more of that thing of, of be a patron to, to true content. It, it's great. There's no trolls. People aren't going to pay five bucks a month to come and fuck with you, right? On your own, in your own place. Maybe they would right? with you just because it's you. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe they would. No, it's really great. And plus, there's the community board. And I love that I can't po- make a post on the community board. I can only comment, right? So I've got. I, there's the post section, which is what I produce, and then there's the community section for what they produce, and other and myself and others can comment on those. It's really a good deal, and I and I hope really uh, Patreon. There's a few rusty edges around it. You know, they need to do better on permalinks and stuff like that. But it's really a great platform. A cool platform. What, what, are, what are the fees that you're paying on that amount, though? I kind of work. It's it. I'll tell you what. It's fucked up. Um, the uh, the Patreon only gets five percent, right? Yeah. But the but the money transfer fees are like seven. So it comes yeah. out 
it comes out I'm getting 88 percent and and uh, and so you know it's just it's unconscionable that Patreon only gets five and all these assholes that's electronic nothing get get uh, get get seven percent right it's ridiculous and he, you know what else you know what else the VAT for like the euro euro communities I don't know what you see on your end but here so so here's the thing so a guy in the UK wants to pay, wants to be a patron for five dollars a month they have to pay five do- they pay five dollars to me and seven to the UK government seven <laughs> It's a it's a it's a hundred and twenty percent tax really for people in the UK. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, Great Britain. Yeah, now some of the others are less. You know, it's a couple bucks for you know different EU countries. But the but G, GB is the highest at a hundred twenty percent tax. Now, if that isn't fucked up, then you then then we've lost the whole standard. Of what fucked up is, right? <laughs> um, no, that's, that's that's a good point, Richard. Um, I'm, we're going to need to wrap up. Uh, okay, I, I've loved this though, and uh, maybe yeah. we could do a part two at some point to focus Any. on some of these areas in a little bit more depth and go a little bit more laser focused. Yeah. Um, but what is the what's the best way for people to find out more about you, what you're up to, website, all of that stuff? Well, freetheanimal dot com. You know, one word, free the animal.com. You know, that's my portal into everything. You can find the Patreon there. You can find Facebook there. You can find Twitter. I don't do hardly anything on Twitter. You know, I kind of use it as an RSS feed for people who want to get my. So, you know, whenever I do a post, it goes out there. Uh, you know, and I have a YouTube channel. I put up a video. I did one on roasting potatoes the other day, of all things. So, so you know, you can check that. You can. I do a video every once in a while when I when I feel like it. Right. Uh, short. No. No fancy shit. I just like, hey, here's the deal. Uh, and then you know, I have the Facebook presence, and I have so I have my personal page. I just deleted my free the animal. Uh, Facebook page. I, it, I don't, there's no need to waste time getting into it. I deleted it. It was, it was worthless at this point. So I have my personal Facebook page and my Richard Nikolai's Keto Tard Chronicles. So that's where we ridicule, mock, make fun of everything keto tarded in the, um, in the, um, you know, p- uh, blogosphere, palosphere, whatever. But, we do, we do also have some sources of good keto information, which I, Mark Sisson's new book is pretty decent, right? Also, Keto Gains, uh, they, they, they believe in caloric deficit if you want to lose weight on, on keto, which is essential. And also, Real World Keto is another one, too. So it's not just, it's not like that we're, that we're mocking the idea of ketosis or ketogenic dieting uh, for those who like it. We're just doing this. We're just mocking the stupid shit where you like take shots of, uh, of, uh, Oh, I'll have to send you the picture. I don't know if you saw it where the other day where I did the, the keto tard satiety kit. Did you see that? I haven't I'll seen send you. No, I'll send. I'll send you the. I'll send you the image. I can, the keto I can embed it for you if you like. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, now, Richard, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's uh, you're quite the character, and it's it's really fun to get just a different personality uh, onto the show. Uh, very different. <laughs> you always um, get me. Str- you always get me straight up, and when people say, "Wow, he's so he's so like he's so like you know he's so," I'm like, well. I do that so that you know I'm not lying to you. Well, at least you're authentic and you're doing you. Yes. So that's that's, that's good. right. Um, I'm not lying to you. And for, for everyone listening, to find the show notes for this, everything, every resource link that Rich and I mentioned, go to corporatewarrior.org. And also there you will find a link to every single episode that I've recorded to date. And until next time, guys, thank you very much for listening. Thanks for having me, Lawrence. It was a great time. I loved it. Likewise, and obviously, I will probably cut it there. I'm actually, yeah. I had a thought. I'm going to take the intro uh, and I'm going to include that, like you said, because what I want to do is want. I want to show people, because I think my listeners will be really interested to see what does the documentation process look like. I mean, 
what is it yeah. what does the off the record stuff look like or sound yeah. like um so that'd be quite a cool experiment to see how they yeah and it, and, and and also they get to see like oh they didn't say well hey we're gonna say this and when i say this we're gonna you know it's not scripted we didn't right. like sit here and say how are we gonna how are we gonna script this right <laughs> no and I think they're just going to be ask, like, at, the, at the most, you just asked me if I was com- comfortable answering some questions about Dave Asprey and income from the blog, right? So yeah, that's yeah. it. I definitely need to review it, though, to make sure I don't shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> whatever. You, well, hey, whatever you want. It's, yeah. it's, it, uh, you, own, you own the content. That's the agreement. So you do what you like with it. And uh, what's your time frame for publishing? Um, probably within two to three weeks because I've got a bit of so, a yeah. backlog of yeah. other shows. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But as quickly plus you, as possible. Plus, plus you outsource it. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've got, you should see, it's like, it's like a well-oiled machine now, well, Richard. It's, it's good. You know, when I do this stuff myself, it's like, it's like once I get it done, I'm like, I dive, because I was doing everything myself, and I dive into it, because I can't wait for it to be out there. You know, so once you outsource it, you have to real, you have to get it, get the, get the, you know, get the cue thing going. So, you know, in a input output kind of thing. Right. So you have to learn the patience from there. Right. Yeah. So. But it's, 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 it's okay because it's quite frequent. So I post new episodes every Monday and Thursday. So I'm uh-huh. so excited about those days because I know that I'm going to go into yeah. my WordPress and there's going to be a finished post because I've got, yeah. I've got it pretty good now, Richard. I've got a guy that does the audio and a guy that writes the blog post as well. And Great. He, he's from the Philippines and he's better, oh. he's a better writer than I am and I studied English at university you know what I mean really and it is it is just a real and they're such great guys I mean one of them I know personally I used to work with the guy and the other one is is through Upwork as a freelancer and, and the, the cool thing the cool thing about the world now is these people can literally be anywhere right yeah. they can be you know my my blog my blog has been run since 2009 by a, a, a bunch of guys out of Bratislava, right? <laughs> I'd, yeah. no, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to talk at length another time about yeah. your blog. I'd love to learn more about what you do. Um, so, so maybe if you're up for it, we could do a part two in the future. Anytime, anytime, anything you want. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I like. I, I like doing these where it's. It's not so formal and scripted. You know, I've done. I've done other podcasts where, you know, it's it's very. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So I know what you mean. Right. So I've got yeah. a, I've got a jet, but you know, thanks again yeah. for coming on. I appreciate thanks. it. And I'll be in touch as soon as it's live, Richard. I had a great time. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Before you head off, head on over to corpwarrior.com to get your free ebook with six interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay, and Bill Day Simone, on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss, and overall health in an efficient, effective, and sustainable way. These transcripts are not verbatim, deliberately. Instead, they've been transcribed in an easy read format to make it more enjoyable and easier for you to quickly pick out what you need and start getting results. To get your ebook, head on over to to corpwarrior.com that's c-o-r-p warrior.com and enter your email address then check your email for an email from me with a confirmation link once you click the link you'll be instantly redirected to a pdf version of the transcripts this episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. 
To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and into Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. This episode is brought to you by the Resistance Exercise Conference, the science and application of strength training for health and human performance. Would you like to learn from the top strength training researchers, network and connect with other exercise professionals from all over the world, join a welcome reception on a Friday night to build relationships with other strength training professionals, experience an early morning workout from an expert trainer to kickstart your Saturday and get inspired, rejuvenated and focus on your strength training business I certainly do and that is why I am attending and interviewing all of the speakers at the event. The Resistance Exercise Conference will be held on the 9th and 10th of March 2018 in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Commons Hotel. To get 10% off your entry fee, head on over to resistanceexerciseconference.com, click the registration button and enter Corporate Warrior 10 in the promo code field in PayPal. I'm very excited about this and I've wanted to attend for years. Sign up now at resistanceexerciseconference.com and get 10% off with promo code CORPORATEWARRIOR10 and I look forward to meeting you in person.